to that turn, eh, Robbo? He was excellent. He won the penalty. He took the penalty. He showed good pace when he was running in behind. The second goal was superbly finished. He timed his run to perfection, just onside. And he made good decisions. And he just brings everybody else into the play. The wide players, I thought, played much better today than they have done in the past. The young players playing out wide, particularly Castillejo. I thought it was a good performance by Milan, but it was also a very good performance by Ibrahimovic. And a very good performance overall from the team, Gav, considering what they saw Inter do 24 hours earlier. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, Inter uh, laid down their marker and this was Milan's answer. And, and of course, and it comes without Theo Hernandez, mm -hmm. uh, without Shalanoglu, without Benacer in midfield. All, all three key men for this Milan team, all of them out. Overall, Robbo, if we're talking about Milan and Inter, who has impressed you more over the last couple of days? Uh, well, it was against Juventus, so Inter were I thought, excellent. Most of their decision-making was good. The game plan was right. Uh, everyone played to the top of their game. But you have to also admire Milan because they've come back from a defeat against Juventus when everybody had almost written them off after that, saying that obviously they're going to start to crumble. They're not going to win the title. I thought they put, showed a lot of authority today in their performance. The three players down the middle of the pitch, Donnarumma, I thought was, again, very composed. He made two good saves near the end of the game. Robin Yoli played as well as he has been playing at any time. I thought Kessie was outstanding. And then, of course, Ibrahimovic. So I thought it was an excellent performance by both sides. But Inter at the moment, because it was against Juventus, I thought that was a fantastic display. Uh, let's take a look at how the newspapers summed up that victory for Inter over Juventus. Gazeta going with Inter celebrate. Meanwhile, Tutor uh, Sports saying only one Inter. Uh, what did you make of the match overall, Robbo? I know you were calling it for the world feed. Inter were excellent, weren't they? They were. I thought they got their game plan absolutely right. The two centre forwards didn't sort of chase around. They allowed Danilo and Chiellini to have the ball. And they dropped that little bit deeper to make it compact. And Chiellini and Danilo, when they had the ball, didn't look forward enough. Ronaldo ended up going out into wide areas, which was, I'm not sure why he wanted to do that. Ramsey was ill-disciplined. And the counter-attacking of Inter was excellent. Barella, I thought, was as, that's as good as I've seen him play. The front two linked up quite well with each other. Brozovic, I know Gav has mentioned before, led in midfield. He picked the right passes at the right time. And Vidal, I picked him out before the game as being a liability. Mm. He could go and get himself sent off. But he was outstanding. Scored his goal. He closed people down. He did everything that the manager asked of him. Tactically, what did Pirlo get wrong, Robbo? Uh, again, when the two wide centre-halves had the ball, it happened in the very first minute of the game. And I hear Pirlo keep saying they play too slowly. It's not so much they played slowly. They didn't play forward. Danilo had the ball in the very first minute of the game. And Morata Mar made a brilliant run. He came short and span in between the centre-halves. And if Danilo had played the ball, Morata would have been in. But Danilo turned away from it, kept possession, and they then couldn't get it into midfield because they were compact in midfield. And Martinez and Lukaku dropped that little bit deeper. So, you know, everyone was saying, well, the midfield players didn't play. Yes, they're absolutely right. But there wasn't too much space for them to play. The ball that they should have been playing was over the top. And Ronaldo should have played next to Morata. I thought, and I'm going to say this, uh, I thought Ronaldo actually bottled it. He didn't want to play up against the three centre-halves. He went out wide into an area where he wasn't going to cause any problems. And when he did cross the ball, who was he going to cross it for? One player against three. It was a poor performance from Ronaldo. Why is he bottling it, Robert? This is Cristiano Ronaldo. Because physically, he probably didn't fancy the, the, the contest up against uh, Skriniar, against De Vrij. Uh, and I think Pirlo said that he went up against Bastoni. He certainly didn't go up against Bastoni. He went out and played in a wide area. And he didn't affect the game at all. He started coming short early on in the game. He kept on losing possession. Then he went into an area where he thought, I can get easy possession. But he didn't make anything happen with it. So I, I think it was a poor performance from Ronaldo. Is that something that's been reiterated in Italy as well, Gab? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, people have pointed it out that, that Cristiano had, had a poor game. People have pointed out that, you know, Cristiano uh, also had a poor game um, before against, you know, there's two outings. He's played at San Siro twice this year and, and he hasn't scored. Um, I, I think there's a little bit of sympathy because obviously Cristiano's bailed uh, Juve out on several occasions this season. But, you know, this was, this was a big game. Big game. I'm not quite as critical as uh, as Robbo is of, of Ronaldo. I thought he didn't get the service when he was in the middle. And, you know, I, I think part of the reason he went out wide was to try and make something happen. Uh, when things don't work at Juve, it is part of the culture of the club for individuals, if you've got great individuals, um, to, to step up, to take some chances, to take people on. Uh, and I think that's what he tried to do. But 
on the day, it obviously didn't work for him. We heard Gavin Jurgen Klinsmann on yesterday's show, uh, Robbo, talking about the fact that Pirlo needs time. Uh, do you think, given time, he's going to pull through this? Yeah, and I also heard your answers. You weren't giving Gav much chance, really, were you? I think well, I'd, he's, heard, he's I'd heard them a lot. <laughs> He's a, he's a young manager. He's inexperienced. I mean, it's a, it's a, it was a big call to give him the job. But now they've given him the job. They've got to give him time. He's got to learn. When think, I think he made three substitutions for the sake of making substitutions. And it didn't work. He lost the shape of the team completely when they went 2-0 down. He ended up with Bernadeschi at left back because Frobos had to come off. So I think he made a rash decision there. And he will make rash decisions. And he make the wrong decisions. But over the course of time, if he's a good coach, which I'm sure he will be, he'll be OK at Juventus. Don't worry about that. Why are you sure he will be? Because I think he's got a football brain. I can see what he's trying to do. I think he's got, in my view, a, a couple of problems. Uh, Ronaldo is a great goal scorer, but he has to play up front and do the job that's asked of him. And I think he, he has to play, at the moment, he's playing Ramsey, who's another ill-disciplined player that runs here, there and everywhere to try and get involved in the game. But it causes them problems defensively. So that's uh, there's two players that I think cause Pirlo a problem. If Ronaldo plays up front and plays next to Rata, he's a magnificent player. He'll score goals when crosses come into the box. But make sure he plays up front when Rata get an understanding like Lukaku and Martinez have got at Inter. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.